This is a Caterpillar 3508 marine engine. It is typical of the 3500 series engines. You were shown unit injector removal and installation in videotape 166. Also, videotape 169 shows how the unit injector is tested when it is removed from the engine. Injector synchronization can be checked and adjusted without breaking the wire seal and removing the fuel setting cover. Remove the plug to the left of the cover. The top bolt on the fuel setting cover is the synchronizing pin. The lower bolt is a standard bolt that is sealed with a wire and seal. Remove the washer from the synchronizing pin and put it in the threaded hole to the left of the cover. Injector synchronization is the setting of all injector racks to a reference point so that each injector sends the same amount of fuel to each combustion chamber. This is done by setting each injector rack to the reference position when the control linkage is held in a fixed position called the synchronizing position. Turn the synchronizing pin all the way in against the housing and tighten it. Hold the governor linkage in the fuel on direction with an elastic strap. The fuel stop lever will now be in contact with the synchronizing pin. Now we are ready to use the synchronizing gauge. It has a dimension of 12.7 millimeters. Put the gauge on the round part of the rack between the injector body and the end of the rack assembly. There is a screw slot in the top end of the control rod. Put a screwdriver in the screw slot and turn the screw one click at a time until the synchronizing gauge just fits between the end of the rack assembly and the injector body. To get the setting correct, you must get the right feel with the gauge. Move the gauge up and down to check the clearance. The feel is similar to that of a feeler gauge when it is used to check valve clearance. To make sure the linkage is free and positioned correctly, pull up on the control rod and release it two or three times. Then check the setting again. If other injectors were removed, synchronize them the same way. Synchronization must be correct before other adjustments are made. The engine must be on top center for fuel timing. One special tool used for timing is the set gauge. It has a bottom step that lets you set a dial indicator to the dimension required for the unit injector. The dial indicator is installed in a fixture assembly and adjusted to service manual or fuel setting information specifications. There is a different setting for reduced RPM engines. The dial indicator determines if the distance from the top of the injector follower to the injector body surface is correct. The dial indicator is held by a collet that is part of the timing fixture. To change the fuel timing adjustment, loosen the adjustment screw lock nut on the rocker arm if it was not previously loosened during cylinder head removal. The engine must be at top center on the compression stroke for number one cylinder. Put a screwdriver in the slot of the adjustment screw and turn it counterclockwise until the rocker arm is loose in the follower. This is to prevent damage to the rocker arm and injector if the injector timing was not correctly adjusted before. 
Then turn the adjustment screw clockwise until zero is read on the dial indicator. Tighten the lock nut and torque to service manual specifications. Check the setting again to see that the adjustment has not changed and that the dial indicator reads zero. If not, repeat the procedure. The fuel setting check is made by removing the plug to the right of the fuel setting cover. The for the dial indicator is threaded into the hole. The synchronizing pin is still installed. The governor lever is still being held in the fuel on position against the synchronizing pin. The dial indicator with a three inch contact point is installed in the collet and zeroed. If an alternator is mounted in this location, the dial indicator dust cover may have to be removed to prevent interference. Don't tighten the nut on the collet too tight or it will restrict indicator movement. Remove the synchronizing pin that was installed previously. Read the dial to see if the setting is correct. Next, we'll make the adjustment to set the maximum power output of the engine by limiting the maximum travel of the torsion shafts and injector racks. To change the fuel setting, remove the seal from the cover if necessary. The adjustment screw under the cover is against the face of the fuel stop lever, and the dial indicator reading is the fuel setting. Loosen the lock nut and turn the fuel setting screw in or out to get the correct fuel setting, as given in the fuel setting information microfiche. After the correct reading is obtained, tighten the lock nut and recheck the setting. If the head was previously removed and the valve adjustment screws backed off, tighten them loosely and lightly tap them to force the lifter assemblies against the camshaft. For valve clearance adjustment, the engine must have the number one piston at top center on the compression stroke. Turn the engine in the normal direction of rotation if it is necessary to turn the flywheel. Put the timing bolt through the hole in the flywheel housing. If the number one piston is on the compression stroke, both the intake and exhaust valve rocker arms can be moved. Valve clearance is measured with a feeler gauge between the rocker arm contact and the bridge wear seat. If not to service manual specifications, loosen the lock nut and turn the adjustment screw until the correct feel is felt on the gauge. Half of the valves can be adjusted with the number one piston on the compression stroke. A second crankshaft position is used to check the rest of the valves. The service manual gives complete information on valve setting and timing procedures and specifications for intake and exhaust valves. Tighten the lock nut and check again. Always use the correct service manual for the engine you are servicing.